Welcome back to Star Rapid, the company that does serious engineering for serious engineers just like you. Serious engineering. Today we're going to talk about the huge subject that is color matching. And if you're wondering, we're keeping the U in color. Who the hell writes this shit? So, how can you ensure better color matching? Many suppliers and customers have disagreements about color, and there are some really simple and easy ways of getting better results. Some people believe that machines, such as color spectrophotometers, are the way to go in color testing. But in our field, where we have to make so many different colored parts in such a short space of time, we find that the simplest and lowest cost methods are often more reliable. I'm going to talk mostly about coloring using paint, but many of the challenges are the same in printing and plastic injection molding, etc. So, here are seven simple ways of getting your color mixing and matching right. One, test your eyes. Color is all about human perception, and therefore the ultimate test of whether or not a color is right or wrong comes down to whether a human decides it is right or wrong. Now, just as you would calibrate a color spectrophotometer, you should test a person's color perception. This is really easy to do and only takes about 20 minutes. We use the Farnsworth Munsell 100 Hue Color Vision Test to test all 250 of our employees each year. We've put the link in the description below so that you can go and do the test for yourself straight after this video has finished. Please feel free to share your scores in the comments section below and tell us if you were surprised by what you found. The scores go from zero for perfect all the way to 904 for a person whose vision is completely monotone. The normal range for most people is in the 12 to 70 range and if you are above 70 you have a noticeable color deficiency. At Star Rapid, we have our own rule that no one with a score worse than 12 is allowed to have a professional opinion about color. Out of 250 people tested, only 10 or 4% met that standard. We also ensure that they've been to an optometrist and are also given glasses where needed. You can also tell very easily which of my people are 12 or better because they all have rainbow wings sewn onto their shirts just here. And as you can see, I don't have that badge because I score around 40. And therefore, even in my own business, I am not allowed a professional opinion on matters pertaining to color matching. Two, Philips D65. For around about the price of a romantic steak dinner, fava beans and a nice bottle of Chianti, you can buy a light booth. You will have a selection of lamps to choose from, but generally speaking, the one that most companies rely upon for color matching is the Philips D65 Artificial Daylight Fluorescent Tube. Once you have one of these light booths, you can do all of your color matching therein. Three, white everything. Say my name. Even when you're using a light booth for color matching, you need to eliminate all color pollution in the matching environment. At Star Rapid, for example, we have red t-shirts and blue floors throughout most of the factory. So that causes color pollution. So that means wearing a white lab coat is important. Having white floors, white walls, white ceilings, and even the ambient lights in the ceiling should be Philips D65. The light booths are usually a kind of light gray, and, and that's okay as well. You just need to eliminate all strong and overpowering colors. Four, neutral colored frames. It also helps greatly when matching a painted part to a Pantone reference, for example, to put a neutral colored card frame around the two items side by side. This helps to eliminate shaded areas that also detract from the true color. Five, cool, dark, and dry. A lot of people like to specify colors using Pantone references. One thing that you have to remember about Pantone chips made of white card is that they can get dirty and damaged. We tend to buy the type that has 10 tear off chips for single use. We then store that chip with the QC samples, which means at that point it is retired. Every time we need to refer to this color reference, we tear off a new chip, which is guaranteed to be clean and in good condition. One key point about color chips is that they will degrade over time due to a range of environmental effects. 
so you must keep them in a cool, dark and dry place at all times when not in use. Typically we replace all of our card Pantone chips once per year. The same goes for customer golden samples. They too must be kept in a cool, dark and dry place. 6. Pantone chips for injection mouldings. One of our really big challenges is when a customer specifies card-based Pantone references for an injection moulding. Now, this problem might not be obvious unless you're in our industry, but there is a fundamental difference between the way you perceive colour coming off a card-based chip and out of an injection moulding, and I mean out of an injection moulding. A chip is an ink on the white card and is therefore effectively a 2D colour, whereas an injection moulding is oftentimes translucent. That means that light can penetrate the surface of the moulding from the top and the bottom and it reflects and refracts from within the moulded part itself. You also have to consider what the lighting conditions will be on the opposite side of the part when it is assembled and replicate that. There is even a problem that the perception of colour changes when the surface finish is gloss, for example, compared to textured. It may well be identical colour, but a human perceives it differently. This is why we have the Pantone injection moulded chips that have different thicknesses and different surface finishes. If you are specifying colours for injection moulding, please, please, please stop specifying card-based Pantone references and use these. Buy these. These are awesome. 7. Customer and supplier must synchronise. But liquor! Our prices have never been lower! Before a customer and supplier engage in any painting, printing or dyeing, they should explore whether or not both sides have a similar and competent colour matching methodology in place. Although we have two X-Rite colour spectra photometers in-house, each costing about $12,000, we really don't rely upon them that much at all. No matter how accurate they are, they still do not perceive colour in the same way that a human does. So, to recap a little, you need to ensure that the people having an opinion about colour in your businesses, whether on the customer or the supplier side, must have had their colour perception tested. Also an eye examination would help. You should agree upon using a light booth and Philips D65 for most testing. Remove all colour pollution, which pretty much means white, 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 white everywhere. Use neutral coloured card frames around the samples to be matched. Keep all your references in a cool, dark and dry place. And finally, if you're specifying colour for plastic injection moulding, you should use specialised Pantone injection moulded references. Do all that and you're well on your way to improving your colour matching experience. How does it look better on you? So, that's it for today. Don't forget to pound that like button, subscribe, comment and share. And as always, we are the company that does serious engineering for serious engineers just like you. Serious engineering. Side effects include no more arguments about who's right or wrong about colours, no more having to rely upon expensive technology, and if you follow our advice, you too will have an extremely professional colour mixing department just like ours in the video to follow.